Hello and welcome to the Widow's Oil. My topic today is called Flip the Script. Now, yeah, in uh, Exodus 4, we have the miraculous signs that Moses does for Pharaoh. And I want to point out two of those signs. The one was that Moses had to cast his rod on the ground and it became a serpent. And then also the third miracle, which was taking water from the river and it becomes blood on dry land. Okay, so I want to point out that the rod became a serpent and the water became blood. Now, in Psalm 23, we are told that the rod, God's rod and his staff protects us. It is something good. But yeah, we see when it's cast on the ground, it becomes a serpent, which is not good. And water normally symbolizes the um, water that Christ gives us, the living water. But when this living water was thrown by Moses on the dry land, it became blood, which is not, generally speaking, a good symbol. There are instances where it is good. I'm not going to discuss that. But I want to point out the common denominator here is the both the rod and the water were cast to the ground and then it changed so i want to say to you that if your understanding is carnal um, and earthly then you can be deceived um, by reading the scriptures because your mind is carnal and you do not have the capacity for spiritual understanding, it is possible that you can be deceived because the serpent will come and twist things and show you wrong doctrine and you will be deceived. The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, you see? And so you need to be a spiritual man. Now I'm go going to show you, you need to be spiritually minded and not carnally minded in order to um, not be deceived. And that coupled with a lot of prayer to the Lord um, and trust in him and holding fast to the things you have received up to now because now I'm going to show you an example that I found of how a false teacher flip, flips the script. The um, scripture he's going to flip upside down which I want to show you so you can start seeing what is being done out there um, is Romans 14 verse 1. It says they receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. So that's Romans 14, the law of liberty. You can go and read the whole chapter. For sake of time, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how false teachers easily flip the script. So yeah, is a false teacher from a video where I made a screenshot. This false teacher uh, is misleading people to believe that they need to keep the Torah, but he's doing it quite subtly. So at this point, he is he is um, taking his first step. So what he does is he says. The traditional Christ, 
Christian sentiment or understanding of Romans 14 verse 1, who are the weak in faith? The weak are Christians whose weakness is directly connected to their belief in Jesus plus a continued preference for keeping Torah. So what he says is traditionally, the Christian view was weak in faith means people who struggle to let go of law keeping. They struggle to have faith in Christ alone. And that is correct. That is how we understand it. But now these false teachers write many books just like the false teachers in the Christian church used to write many books with many doctrines. Now these false infiltrators write books and have their doctrines. And they say the weak are non-hostile, non-Christian Jews whose weakness is directly connected to their, as of yet, inability to believe in Jesus as Messiah. So what he is saying is, Paul is saying is, when he wrote the book of Romans, the weak were referring to Jews who couldn't yet believe in Jesus as the Messiah. They are the weak. And he obviously extrapolates that meaning the weak are the, are the Jews. They are just weak in faith. They're keeping Torah. The strong in faith are those that um, believe in Jesus, but also keep Torah. So what he is doing is he's totally flipping the script. Whereas we traditionally understand weak in faith is that initially the believers who turned to Jesus struggled to let go of their customs. They were given time. And Paul said to receive them, but not to um, argue with them. He said, receive the one weak in faith, but not to dispute over doubtful things. In other words, do not argue over law keeping, for example, because things were just the same then as what they are now. But now what these people do is they say, no, it doesn't have, it's got nothing to do with law keeping. It means a weak Christian is, and I don't even know what a non-Christian Jew is. So what he's saying is the weak actually means that it was the, the Jews who hadn't converted to the Messiah yet. They were weak and they were to be received. Now why they are doing this is to take the focus of the fact that in Christianity the text correctly pointed out that being weak in faith had to do with the inability to have faith in Christ alone and to add works of the law. Um, he obscures that and makes it that the weak are those that do not have faith in the Messiah yet, you see. And why is he doing that? Because they are mixing law and grace in these messianic movements. And so you've generally got traditional Christians together with these messianic Jews. And now the focus must be taken off law keeping. You see, so law keeping must be normalized. So they accept the Christians and they accept the Messianic Jews who hold to the uh, to the Torah, um, as they call it. But what they mean with Torah is um, to keep the law of Moses, to basically practice Judaism. And then when they have normalized it in the churches that one group keeps the law and confesses Jesus as Messiah and the other group doesn't and the weak ones are the 
Jews that must now be won over to the Messiah, obviously. Then they're going to flip the script again. And eventually they will say the weak are Christians. The weak are those who do not keep the Torah along with Messiah. You see, so for now we're in this stage. They do it incrementally, boil the frog. So they change your traditional understanding to this alternative, new understanding, and then they're going to flip it again. And then true Christians will be weak in faith for not keeping the Torah. Satan is very, very subtle. We need the Lord. We need our faith. Hold on to what you heard at first. 